Welcome to the What's So Smart podcast, powered by the Huntsville-Madison County Chamber of Commerce. I'm your host, Clark Dunn. Huntsville, Alabama is known as a smart place, but really, what's so smart about it? In this podcast, we will talk to the leaders of Huntsville's economic and cultural development to answer that question. From rockets to genomics, from cyber to music, What's So Smart will explore the visionary and data-driven initiatives that make Huntsville so smart. Stay connected with us on all your social media platforms at A Smart Place. You can watch the full conversations on our YouTube channel at Huntsville, Alabama, USA, and be sure to subscribe wherever you listen. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope you enjoy this episode of the What's So Smart podcast. Welcome back to the What's So Smart podcast. Today, I have the opportunity to sit down with Jeff and Tara Mello of the Cigar Box Huntsville. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, I'm excited to have, kind of have this conversation and learn more about the, the work that y'all do. Uh, before we kind of dive into talking about the Cigar Box uh, guitars, talk a little bit about your sort of your journey to get here to Huntsville. Wow. It's just a really interesting story. We came here when our daughter was uh, between the fourth and fifth grade, and she had always wanted to go to space camp. We had seen some space campers when we toured uh, over at the Houston Space Center, and um, when Jeff had been commuting back and forth, his company does some business with folks on the arsenal. He'd been commuting back and forth, and he realized, oh, there's a space camp here too, and so, can I go? Can I go? <laughs> but she wasn't old enough to stay overnight. Okay. So we said, we'll go, and we'll rent a house for a couple of weeks, and you can go to the day camp version of space camp. So Jeff went back and forth uh, working with the folks that he works with on the arsenal, and I've always been self-employed, so I just worked from the kitchen table at the house we rented, and she went to space camp. And within that two-week period, we fell in love with Huntsville. Mm. We wandered by a house that was for sale that we fell in love with. It happened to be in a neighborhood that was associated with someone I bumped into in a bookstore who was the wow. PTA president of the elementary school that it was zoned for, who spontaneously gave us a tour. Hey, what are the schools like here? Well, <laughs> let, let me come and show you. And by the end of two weeks, we decided that we would pick up and move from Southern California out here. Wow. And so what is your background in Jeff and kind of is 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 your background in engineering, I'm assuming, with Huntsville and stuff like that? I have a 30-year career in engineering. Okay. And um, let's see, over the past 20 years now, I had been traveling out here uh, quite a bit from Southern California as my customer base was growing here on the Arsenal. Uh, I've come out here for meetings, integration efforts, and just was watching the area grow like crazy and uh, forging relationships here too with other engineers. And as Tara was mentioning, you know, we went around and looked at some houses. Originally, when we started looking at homes, we were thinking that this was going to be a great investment opportunity. We saw how inexpensive the homes were compared to Southern California. And we thought, well, perhaps we'll buy a, a small home that we could rent that would be a good investment for this wonderful community that continues to grow. Uh, but when our, our daughter got excited about it more, we got to learn more about the city, uh, it just seemed to make more sense just to come out here and enjoy a different lifestyle than in Southern California. Yeah, and so w when did y'all officially make the move and what was it like uh, for your daughter being in school and kind of taken away, uh, like obviously she fell in love with Space Camp and you all fell in love with Huntsville, but that is a tough move sometimes. What was that experience like and, and was it a seamless sort of process? You know, it, it was surprisingly easy. Um, we went back home and we were at a Girl Scout meeting and the folks said, so how was your vacation? And we said, it's great, we're moving to Alabama. <laughs> and they said, you're moving to Alabama? We said, oh, you don't understand. This is not like what you think yeah. the South is like. Um, and it took about three months for everything to kind of get in a row and actually make that move. So we're coming up on eight years this fall. Um, so she started at fifth grade in Southern California in a class with 37 students. So um, we were in an okay school district. It wasn't terrible portable classrooms and you know the kids would just pile in and more and more kids would show up and you'd end up with these just enormous size classes and she came out here started a couple months into the fifth grade discovered that she wasn't quite where she needed to be in math they were ahead mm. here um, but just instantly loved it and had a class that was literally half or even a little less than half wow. than half the size um, and from a parent perspective, I was absolutely shocked because they went through December 
and you know, a few kids moved and the class started getting bigger. We came back to school in January with a letter from the principal saying they had taken on a new teacher because the class sizes were too big. Wow. And they were dividing up the fifth grade and adding one more class of the fifth grade. So there, there ended up to be 21 kids in her class. And so that alone, from that perspective, um, you know, she got more individualized attention. There was a gifted program that we didn't have at our school that she was able to participate in. And man, from a school perspective, you know, there was an outdoor chess set. She loved to play (laughs) chess and there was a track and all sorts of things that we didn't have. So she loved it from that perspective. Um, We were talking coming over here, though. uh, You know, we've got UAH right down the street. And she participated in a girls in engineering day within the first couple of weeks of us moving here. And um, we had uh, a parachute team drop out of the sky (laughs) and land on the UAH campus. And she got exposed to all of these incredible women um, in various engineering and science uh, careers. And that's her thing. You know, she was a kid who really wanted to go to space camp. So from that perspective, it was actually it was actually pretty easy for her, which, of course, makes it easier for the whole family when the kids are happy. For sure. So um, obviously you're coming up on your eight years of kind of being here in Huntsville, but uh, the cigar cigar box guitars aren't something that you were necessarily doing when you got here. You've only been doing that for the last three or so years. Talk a little bit about how that came about. Yeah, that's an amazing journey. Uh, if you told me in early 2019 that I would be doing anything with any instruments, I would have told you you were crazy. <laughs> I have no background in music. I do not play a six-string guitar. Mm. Um, but as an engineer and a woodworker, Uh, These things fascinated me very quickly. When a friend of ours had visited here back in 2019, uh, bought a cigar box guitar, and it wouldn't fit in his suitcase. Mm. If his suitcase were two inches longer, we probably wouldn't be having this discussion right now. But he left that guitar at our house, and I picked it up and looked at it and said, I'm going to make one of these. This is kind of cool. And I'm going to hang it on the wall because I know nothing about making music. (laughs) But I built the guitar, and then I went down to the cigar box guitar store that was owned by Pat Nickel at the time and he was doing free lessons. And I picked up the guitar, started to play it a little bit, and saw how easy it was to just start playing an instrument like this. And I brought it home and, and did some more building and made one for our daughter, made one for Tara, started making them for friends and family. And uh, by about the fifth one, I started reading the labels that they put on the side of the cigar boxes, mm. the ones that say that they're addictive. <laughs> <laughs> by then, it was too late for me. Yeah. I just enjoyed building these things so much. Uh, the folks at the store allowed me to sell guitars on consignment. Um, so I was able to buy more parts and get more engaged in it. And I just... As an engineer, I've always enjoyed learning, uh, and this was a new element I got to learn. I got to learn about music some more and, and what makes them resonate and, and why do they act differently. Uh, so that got to um, allow me to, to think more about, about music. And then when uh, Pat Nickel decided he wanted to uh, retire after having the store for so many years, he offered the store to us, and we said, Pat, that's, that's nice, but we think that's a bad idea for us <laughs> because we've got our day jobs. Uh, I don't know that we really have time for this. And when he suggested that um, he might have to close the doors because you couldn't find a good fit for it, we stepped back and we looked at what an important resource this has been for Huntsville, what an important resource it is for our community, whether it's uh, people who need music in their lives, whether it's builders uh, who need parts and need ideas. uh, And it's so unique. It's the only store of its kind in the world. And we said, we can't let that go. So we decided that we just figure out a way to maintain our current careers and keep the store going. And it's been fabulous. It it had such, the store itself had such an impact on us. You know, Jeff brought that first guitar down to learn how to play it and kind of got himself hooked pretty quickly. Um, Our daughter's very interested in music. She's since moved on to violin, but he had built that guitar for her. The two of them were going down playing, Mm -hmm. and they would come back, and they would be so happy and lighter. And what are you guys doing over there? What's (laughs) happening? Oh, Mom, you should go do it. You should come with us. And I thought, oh, no. I mean, I, I grew up in a family. They can't clap to the beat of the music. So can I play an instrument? Absolutely not. There's no way I can play an instrument. That's not going to happen. No, Mom, no, Mom, you should come and, and join us. Um, so the first time I went down and attempted to take a lesson was during the Cigar Box Guitar Festival that was in 2019. Okay. 
And I know we're going to talk about this a little bit later, but fast forward three years later, and I was organizing wow. the Cigar Box Guitar Festival for that year. And so when you think about, could you have ever imagined this path? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely not. Could not have imagined that path. Yeah. And I mean, as, as you've kind of, you, you started getting into that role of now being the owners of it and running the shop. What were some of the maybe unique things that you just weren't really uh, expecting? Obviously, you knew what uh, how, to, how to craft a cigar mm -hmm. box guitar, and you knew kind of a little bit about the store. You've been there a lot. Mm -hmm. But now kind of owning the store and being the ones operating it and running it, was there some unique things that kind of took you by surprise? Absolutely. Um, we approached this thinking that this store was about building art, mm -hmm. these guitars, hanging them on the wall, and people coming by and buying them. And that's, that's what the store was about. And we quickly learned that that's not what it's about at all. It's about making an impact on people's lives. Mm -hmm. We have people come in every week who pick up these instruments and play them. They come back every week because they want to be part of a community and share music with each other. We have people who come by who are always interested in playing an instrument, um, but you know thought that was in too intimidating. And with three strings and the simple mm -hmm. playing methods, um, the threshold to get familiar sounds out of these is pretty low, so it builds encouragement for mm -hmm. people very quickly. So people come into our store for therapy. Uh, people come into our store to build community. Builders come into our store because they want to share ideas. Um, so it's much more than just selling some art. It, it re it's really uh, community building. Mm -hmm. How how have you seen over the over the years now with running and operating it and kind of now doing the cigar box festival and kind of now being in charge of that? How have you seen the continued uh, exposure to cigar box guitars kind of spread? Uh, we're talking a little bit about it off air, but just the, your involvement in some schools and talking about kind of how you're able to get kids involved in this. It's been it's been tons of fun to be able to do that. I mean, when we get folks coming in for our free lessons on Saturdays, they can be, well, they can be very little, but but playing guitar typically eight and all the way up into their 80s. Mm. Um, but we've had the opportunity to work directly with some kids uh, first last year with the folks over at the Huntsville Learning Center who were able to get a grant where we worked with kids to build uh, both cigar box guitars and uh, canjos. Mm. And um, we also assembled uh, tambourines with them using uh, license plates. So oh, they were wow. recycled material tambourines. And um, after our builds were complete, we gave them some lessons. And then the entire group gathered together at Microwave Dave Day last fall mm -hmm. and performed Amazing Grace. So simultaneously, singers, tambourinists were the youngest children, uh, cigar box guitar players, and canjos. Um, so we had about 25 uh, folks standing up there performing performing a song. So that was it was really neat to see a group of kids in an after school program who didn't think they could do anything like mm -hmm. that and have something holding in their hands that they had created themselves and then building it. Um, what we were talking about off air was a recent project uh, that's actually in process um, over with the folks at Goldsmith Schiffman Elementary School. The fifth graders there um, have currently in their hands, every single <laughs> fifth grader, 150 canjos. Wow. And a canjo is a single string instrument um, with a, a little can on the end like you'd think of as a, a soup can or mm -hmm. a vegetable can. The cans don't have any labels on them, so the art teacher over there is working with the kids so everybody gets to craft their own artwork on their kanjo and then the music teacher is going to work with them to learn how to play those kanjos mm. and then in process is a classroom set of three string cigar box guitars a lot of like the ones you see here and then later on she's going to teach them how to play those wow and so I, 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 we mentioned it a lot, but the entry point of kind of learning to play an instrument like this is a pretty low entry point. And I think you often you know get to teach people and so we have three guitars and so if you want to do a quick little lesson. I'd love to learn how to play these things. Absolutely, yeah. So one of the things that makes them so simple to play is that they're tuned in open G. Okay. That means when we strum them, and do you have a pick? I do. Okay. Um, when we strum them, and we're not touching any of the strings, that gives us a G chord. Okay. And we can get a lot of songs with just a simple, what they call a bar chord, where you hold down all three strings. So I'm just going to do an example, but I'm going to show you how to play something with two fingers because a bar chord can be difficult to execute. I can play the blues with one finger like there that. There you go. Okay. All right. Uh, there's a whole lot you can do with just uh, three chords. So 
just, again, one finger. What we're going to do is we're going to play with two fingers because I think that these instruments are great to play the blues with. So we're going to take our index finger, we're going to hold it on the middle string of the third fret. We're going to take our ring finger and put it on the fourth fret bottom string. Fourth fret bottom string? Yep, Perfect. and strum all three strings down. That's the first chord we're going to play. Next chord we're going to play, we're going to shift our hand up one position towards the headstock. Don't move your fingers, just slide them up okay. to two and three. We get this chord. Very good. And then the last chord we're going to do is down here at four and five. Four and five. There we go. So Perfect. start with me on three. We're going to strum in fours. So I'll strum four times. And again. Now slide to two. Back to three. to four, two, three. Now try strumming up and down this time. Two, three, four, Two, three, keep it going on three, stay on three, two, three, four, two, three, Very good. <laughs> See, you didn't was, think you could yeah, do it, right? Didn't think I could do it the first time I played a cigar box guitar, but it, uh, hopefully it will not be my last. That was a lot of fun. I really, really did enjoy that. That was fun. Well, you can come visit us any Saturday over at Low Mill between noon and two because we literally do that for two hours every single week. We never pressure anybody to buy anything. We hand out guitars just like this for people to come and play, and we get to have them have the reaction that you just mm -hmm. had now, which is really, really cool and a lot of fun for us. A lot of folks walk into the store and they have a preconceived notion that they need to know something about music, mm. uh, need to know how to read music. And I'm like, no, you don't need to yeah. know any of that. Just if you've got a couple of hands and can keep a beat and yeah. strum, that's all you need to do uh, to start making music and build that confidence and have fun with it. Yeah, and the cigar box guitars are it's 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 like the it's the only one in the country or that it's here in Huntsville, and 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 that that's just incredible to even think about. And the the cigar box festival that y'all do is something that's really grown over the years. Talk a little bit about what that festival's like and kind of being that ambassador for cigar box guitars that y'all are. Well, you know, the Cigar Box Guitar Festival actually started before the Cigar Box Guitar Store mm. uh, opened. So this the uh, folks who owned the store and opened the store originally back in 2010 at Low Mill were a father and son, Pat Nickel and his son, John Nickel. And uh, John had attended one of the first Cigar Box Guitar Festivals, which was over at Low Mill, but before Low Mill was Low Mill, when it was still Flying Monkey Arts. And um, he had just become enamored with the instrument. And he started building them. And then when Low Mill opened as Low Mill, talked Dad into going into business with him. And that's how the store opened. Um, so various folks had put on the festival over the years. Mm -hmm. And in year, let's see, that would have been year 16 was the pandemic year. Um, and so that was a very small festival that, that Pat Nickel organized from the store. And um, when we took over the store, we also realized, oh my goodness, we've inherited this festival, which we didn't really realize. We bought yeah. the store in February of 2021, and it got to be June, which is typically the time of year when the festival happens. And Pat said to us, hey, you know, 
you you probably want to put on a festival this year. It's the world's longest running one, and you got to keep it going. And we went, what, what? Oh, wow. my goodness, we got to do this. Um, we were still in the pandemic then, so we actually held the festival that year in September. But we've since moved back to uh, the traditional weekend, which is the weekend right after Memorial Day weekend. Okay. Usually it's the beginning of June, but this year was our 20th uh, anniversary wow. festival. And the way the calendar fell, we actually were the end of May and the beginning of June. Um, but so we've organized the festival for the last three years and we have taken on the edict of raising money for music education. Mm -hmm. So we, um, raise money and donate it split evenly between Microwave Dave Music Education Foundation and Arts Huntsville's program in the schools, which is called Creative Launchpad. Mm -hmm. So this year we raised uh, $6,350, wow. um, which was pretty cool. We were very excited about that. The first year we raised just over 1000 so we feel like we're, we're coming up in our, in our three years. Um, this year we had five different locations, four days of music. We really went all out <laughs> um, for it being the 20th anniversary. Had some incredible talent. Twelve different uh, bands performed. And uh, they included um, an amazing up-and-coming blues rock uh, woman who is who fronts a trio called Coburn. Her name mm -hmm. is Erin Coburn. Um, she is out of the Cincinnati area and currently on tour in China. So wow. um, she's really she's really moving along. And then um, our Saturday night headliner was uh, Gary Nichols, Grammy winner, former frontman of the Steel Drivers, and he was backed by the Fame Gang, the uh, guy out of the Fame Recording Studios over at Muscle Shoals. So we were thrilled to have a collaboration with the folks over in the Shoals and bring some of that uh, fantastic music to us and then showcase the cigar box guitar in way more complicated ways than what you just <laughs> yes. did. Um, Gary's been playing for more than 40 years, so he can really do a lot with three yeah, strings. Yeah, for sure, I bet. <laughs> and so, I, I mean, thinking through this this last three years of, you know, taking on the shop, taking on the festival, running these different things, what do you kind of see and, and hope the future is and the impact that the Cigar Box Guitars will have here in, 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 in not only Huntsville, but even North Alabama as a whole? So... One of the things that we try to do is just spread joy with these instruments, and we see the positive effect that it has on people's lives. So awareness is the thing that we focus on a lot. Um, making more people aware that these instruments exist and that they're fairly easy to play. Uh, so by getting them into other artists, by getting different artists um, with different music genres to perform with them, uh, to make folks think, you know, to realize that it's not just a, you know, a bluegrassy or a blues uh, sort of instrument. Mm -hmm. it, you know, you can play, um, you know, all sorts of music with them. Uh, so whatever your likes might be, you can probably pick it up and play some pop music and have fun with that. Uh, but by getting them into different artists, uh, recently we got it into Miss Calliope's hands. Mm -hmm. uh, she played during our festival, and she's a, a delightful children's entertainer with such great energy. And now she has the cigar box as part of her uh, demonstration, and that gets kids excited about them because they're like, what's that? box on a stick yeah. and how are you making music with that and and she lets them touch it and let people really you know um see how accessible these instruments are yeah and uh i mean it, it's incredible just to think about your journey here to get to huntsville to kind of the role in which you now play as cigar box guitar ambassadors here in huntsville um and and it'd be interesting to see your perspective on this but with huntsville just being such a there's a, there's a lot of smart people here doing a lot of smart different things and as an engineer as a background what do you think makes and now as a as a small business owner and kind of a creative doing these cigar box guitars what do you think makes huntsville such a smart place well i think a lot of it starts with leadership in our community and uh, the Huntsville City leadership has been fantastic to recognize the importance of music in all of our lives. We have a wonderful music office that's supportive of everybody in this ecosystem. Um, and we see how it not only benefits the economy, uh, but how it affects po people's life in a positive way. Uh, you know, people have been making music since they were banging sticks and coconuts together. And this is just kind of our modern take on that. And people having music in their lives and sharing and celebrating um, and you know, creative people, engineers are creative people. Smart people have these creative outlets. And when the city supports 
uh, that creativity, uh, when we can be involved in supporting builders uh, and allowing them to you know, work outside the requirements that mm. they've been uh, restricted to with, yeah. their, with their career and be more creative, um, I think that makes people smarter. Uh, we had the opportunity to see Todd May speak uh, recently, and he talked about the importance of STEAM and the A in STEAM and how art really helped us get men to the moon uh, because it really opens things up. It allows you to be more creative. So when you have a lot of smart people and they've got this pent up creativity and you give them opportunities to express it, I think that's just better for everybody. Yeah, well, I appreciate y'all taking the last little bit talking about your journey here in Huntsville and, and, and the growth and the continued, I continue to look forward to the success that Cigar Box Guitars here in Huntsville will have for years to come. I thoroughly enjoyed playing it. Didn't think that was gonna be on the, on the <laughs> list of things to do today, but I, I appreciate it. Uh, and yeah, we'll have all the information in the episode notes. If people, if anyone wants to find out more information about what y'all are doing, they can th visit that area. But I appreciate it. Great. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you. It was great speaking with you today. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the What's So Smart podcast. Stay connected with us on all your social media platforms at A Smart Place. You can watch the full conversations on our YouTube channel at Huntsville, Alabama, USA. And be sure to subscribe wherever you listen. Thank you so much for tuning in and we hope you enjoyed hearing more about what makes Huntsville so smart.